What's up, beautiful people of TikTok and YouTube? So I'm gonna try to make this quick, but this is why you have to document everything. So I am going to talk about my son, and I'm gonna present the Guardian at Lightum's recommendations, and I'm gonna talk about what just happened this weekend. For me, I will self-isolate because I need to think about it, and I need to run it through a filter, I need to speak to my attorney, and I'll kinda of get off social media for a minute, and, um, just try to soak it all in, figure out what's going on. So this is why I say document everything. So the last time I got on social media and I was like, document everything, I was talking about my child's ear and the problems he had had. Well, my ex got his ass to the damn ear doctor. Yes, he did. And he's gonna make a comment. Why do you put it on social media? Well, because see, you don't wanna be exposed for the liar and the abuser that you are. So when I put it on social media and there's no contest about what's going on, you act right. And I, that's what I said to him in the office was because that's the only way to get you and your mom to act right. So now I pick my son up on Thursday of this week and I'm handed a bag of pills. I can't even find this pill on Pill Finder. I am told that it's thyroid medicine. He's seen an endocrinologist. Whoa, whoa. That was supposed to take place two years ago, almost two years ago, January of 2023. Here's the Guardian at Lightum's recommendations. To be enrolled in TK Martin at Mississippi State immediately and provide an update to my office when this arrangement has been completed. Was not done. See, my ex and his mother think that they are gods and they can do anything they want because they're really good at manipulating people. And they think, well, we'll just smooth this out. We'll just swing it my way. We'll just enroll him in this other school where she won't have the access to him and we'll tell everybody she's on drugs and she's crazy and she doesn't have any rights. And then, you know, we'll just hedge it up that way. Then we'll go to court and say, oh, she's an uninvolved parent. The second thing, for father to schedule the minor child's endocrinologist appointment with Dr. Lilly at the certain place uh, immediately and provide an update to my office when this appointment has been made. Didn't happen. Apparently, or I was told by the father, so this could be another huge lie because that's all they do is lie and circle round and, and shift and muddy and move and groove. So I was told that the baby didn't have to see the endocrinologist but now I hear that the grandmother has taken him to the endocrinologist. And the problem I have with that is that the grandmother screws up everybody's life and has everybody sick and everybody on some medication. So I wanna be a part of whatever is going on in my son's life, whether it's school, whether it's medical, and I have joint legal custody, so that is my right. So my rights are being denied. And the grandmother is the one behind the scenes being all shady. She's always been shady. I mean, you're talking about a 60 to 70 year old woman scribbling faces out of pictures. Yeah, she's always been really freaking weird. Anyway, so then that appointment supposedly was not made and he didn't have to go. Now all of a sudden I'm handed pills I can't even identify with pill finder. For the child's medication to be picked up, the only reason why the child ended up getting medication picked up after this report was written in 2023 was because I complained for nine months and right before court, his Singular and Zyrtec prescription gets filled just so he can go to court and say he did it. I was getting text messages from Walmart for like six months that the prescription was not picked up. Then he's gonna say, oh, I picked it up at Amory Pharmacy. No, you didn't, because I checked on it a month before court. So didn't care that he didn't have his breathing medication. For the father to provide a medical journal, which includes each appointment the child attends and each medication given to the minor child. A journal, including date and time, never done. So he was never enrolled in school, though he was supposed to be done immediately. He was never taken to the original endocrinologist appointment that I knew about immediately. Didn't get the child's medication immediately. Did not keep a journal. And lastly, for both parties to sign necessary documents, for TK Martin and Dr. Lilly's office, that's the endocrinologist, to discuss the minor child's treatment with our office. So in order for me to sign documents, I would have to be a part of both the child being enrolled in TK Martin, the school, and the endocrinologist, Dr. Lilly. So let's backtrack to where he was enrolled. No parental signatures on his IEP, no notification to the mother on for his testing, None. So the grandmother has done the endocrinologist appointment at some point, 
and the schooling. So she's doing all the shifting behind the scenes, which doesn't surprise me at all. Because if you see what she's put her poor other grandson through, good God. Um, anyway, I digress. So I was supposed to be I was supposed to be a part of the school. He was supposed to be put in TK Martin, not adhered to. I was supposed to be a part of the um, endocrinologist, not adhered to. And I'm handed some pills, and I don't know if it's hypothyroid. I don't know if it's hyper. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what kind of pills they are. And I'm just supposed, and that is not even like legal. I'm not going to trust somebody that, let's, 2020. This woman put a two felony warrants out for my arrest, and this is the final document that I carry with me because they did not want to do what the judge said. The judge said to drop the charges in the divorce. She wouldn't do it. I had to go to the judge, the family member. They tried to remand it to the file. I had to go back to another town and speak to another judge to get her to finally drop them charges when it became big enough and exposed enough that it was an embarrassment and that their family was looking kind of crazy because they weren't following another judge's orders and instead of dropping the charges, they tried to remand them to the file. So this is what it's like with a narcissist. They'll charge you with shit you didn't do to make you look like the bad guy. They'll accuse you of stuff you didn't do. Then they'll stack the deck like, okay, we're not going to follow the guardian at life. Like, who do they think they are? They think they're like gods or something. Just because you get away with manipulating some people and just because the family that you're around doesn't want to call you out on your bullshit doesn't mean everybody's like that. And that's why the woman hates my guts because I point out the bullshit. I don't tolerate it and you're not going to get away with keeping me away from my child's doctor's appointments or school, and anybody in that little town that's watching, y'all need to know who you're really dealing with. These are the biggest psychos that I have ever seen. It's totally a Norman Bates and his mother type of setup, or um, Ted Bundy and his mother. So his mother controls the narrative. She's got his house in her name. She's got the other brother's house in her name. Like, she controls everything. If you don't do what she says, she will flip the fuck out. So now she's controlling my son and got him in school where she can control the narrative and taking him to the doctor without my permission or the dad being present. So this is why you document everything. So when we get to court, thanks, because she thrives on screwing people's lives up so she can come in and go, I'm the great white hope. I'm the savior. No, you screwed it up on purpose so you could come in and be the savior. And me and my ex had had conversations about this. She does it to everybody. The whole family should be able to see it. She's nuts. So thank God that this actually happened because the further we go into this, not only is he disobeying every single guardian at Lightham's recommendations, not only are they trying to hide the fact that they're doing all this crap so they can go to the courts and say, She's an uninvolved parent. She's crazy. She's on drugs. I mean, I've already seen it before. They did it to the ex. Only she was on drugs, and she is crazy. But, I mean, you still don't deny a parent their parental rights. You know what I'm saying? I'm not on drugs, and I'm not crazy, and I proved it over and over again. Needless to say, that's what you're doing. Document everything. Document everything. Do make it all public. Make it, as long as you're telling the truth, make it all public keep records, pictures. Do you have no, I have so many receipts on this woman and this, my ex, that if I started, and his ex, if I started dropping some shit, I could really spill some tea. It would be wise of them to stop screwing with me because I'm this close to starting to drop some more real hefty stuff. But I'm gonna call you out on your bullshit. You took him to the doctor without my knowledge. You enrolled him in the wrong school. You followed none of the guardian at Lightham's recommendations, and you're prohibiting my parental rights. So that let's just start there. But yeah, yeah. And if something were to ever happen to me, my kids know what to do. But that's what it's like dealing with a narcissist, and especially a covert narcissistic woman. They are the worst. They thrive on destroying homes. They thrive on destroying people's lives. And then they scoop in, swoop in and go, hey, I'm just the loving grandmother or the loving spouse. And I'm just here to take care of everybody.